Hey everybody, it's Dr. Seth Evans, uh, back for another video blog today. So the topic of our blog is a common urgent ear, nose, and throat problem. Uh, and this problem is called peritonsillar abscess. Uh, so I have to say, in my practice, probably the most miserable and unhappy patients who walk in the door are patients with peritonsillar abscess. Uh, it's a, not a very pleasant problem to have. But uh, it is something that can be treated and uh, can be dealt with effectively. So uh, what is a peritonsillar abscess? So it, it's really right there in the name, peri and tonsillar. So tonsillar obviously refers to the tonsils in your throat and peri, P-E-R-I, is a, a, you know, a word that means around. So a peritonsillar abscess is an abscess or a collection of pus that is around, around the tonsil. So these infections uh, typically happen as a complication of, a, you know, a typical strep throat or tonsillitis. So a patient gets a throat infection, uh, the tonsils become inflamed and infected, and then in some percentage of patients that infection spreads outside of the tonsil into the surrounding tissue. Um, and normally what happens is, uh, you know, initially this is just an infection within the tissue, what we call cellulitis. And then if it's untreated for, you know, more than a day or two, the infection actually turns into an abscess or a collection of pus. So, um, you know, it can be a little bit hard to tell for me whether it's just a soft tissue infection or a cellulitis or a true abscess. Um, the only way to really tell that is to try and, and drain it and see if there's pus or not. Um, so with uh, peritonsillar abscess, uh, you know, Usually, as soon as I walk into the, the room to see the patient, I can almost tell if they have it or not. Um, you know, the patients who do have it, they just look miserable. They're like hanging out with their mouth open. Uh, when they talk, their voice sounds kind of muffled uh, and slurred a little bit. Uh, the typical description of this is actually called hot potato voice. So if you've ever taken a big bite of piping hot potato, uh, you're going to sound like this and you don't sound right. So that's kind of the typical thing. Um, also with the peritonsillar abscess, the abscess actually uh, inflames the, some of the muscles on the inside of the head that open and close the mouth. So patients with this problem, they have a hard time opening their mouth. So, you know, I'll ask them to open your mouth wide for me and they go, it's like they, get, they can only halfway open their mouth because it's painful to otherwise. Um, so these are kind of things that clue me in right away um, if there's really this problem, or if we're just dealing with a, a garden variety tonsillitis or strep throat. Um, so, you know, what is the treatment for this problem? So if there is truly pus around the tonsil, uh, it's not going to get better unless that pus is drained out. Um, so, you know, this is something that I'm able to do in the office. Uh, you know, basically we put some numbing spray back around the tonsil uh, and then do a small injection of numbing medicine. At that point, uh, what I typically do is try and put a needle into the, uh, the area of swelling around the tonsil. Uh, and we'll, once I get that in there, I'll try and draw back and see if any pus comes out. Um, and I would venture about 50% of the time there's no pus around the tonsil. And it's just sort of an early infection. It hasn't developed into a true abscess yet. And in that case, we're, we're done at that point. We just give the patient uh, antibiotics and steroids, and they usually do quite well. So if I put that needle in there and I start drawing back on it and pus starts coming into the syringe, uh, you know, I know at that point there's a true abscess. And uh, that abscess is not gonna get better unless all of that pus is cleared out effectively. So at that time, when I start seeing pus coming out, um, I do go ahead and make a small incision right in that area and really open things up and make sure all that pus is out of there. Uh, because if you leave any behind, uh, it's very likely to just come right back again. And nobody wants that, me or the patient. <laughs> so uh, at that point, once the pus has been drained, uh, again, I do typically treat these patients with uh, antibiotics and steroids. And again, most of them do well. So at that point, uh, the final question with this is, do patients with peritonsillar abscesses need to have their tonsils removed? Um, I think if, if this has just happened to you once, not necessarily. Uh, it's something you could consider having done. And if you do have your tonsils removed, you'll never get another peritonsillar abscess again. 
Um, but there are risks and unpleasantness associated with the surgery. So it's not something you have to do. Um, for patients who've had two or more peritonsillar abscesses, in that case, I do more strongly recommend to have your tonsils removed um, because having multiple abscesses like this, you're at a much higher risk of getting them over and over again. And that's definitely not something anybody wants. So anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I hope none of you get a peritonsillar abscess, but if you do, uh, come and see me and we'll get it taken care of. Everybody have a great day.